Prabhupada's introduction, Prabhupada includes at the end of the introduction the Gita Mahatmya. The Gita Mahatmya verses. Gita Mahatmya means the glorification of the Bhagavad Gita, the, the benefit of the Bhagavad Gita. 
So it's traditional in reciting Bhagavad Gita that before we recite the Bhagavad Gita, we first of all read the Gita Mahatmya. So it's there in Prabhupada's purports also. Mm. Here you can see the meaning. Huh? No, it's already on it. One may cleanse himself daily by taking a bath in water. But if one takes a bath even once in the sacred Ganges water of Bhagavad Gita, for him the dirt of material life is altogether vanquished. So this is the power of the Bhagavad Gita. If you bathe in the Bhagavad Gita even once, the Bhagavad Gita can cleanse us of the dirt of material life. The material world is a dirty place. Shri Sindhu, are you translating? Okay. So here's some more verses of the Gita Mahatmya. One, one need only attentively and regularly hear and read Bhagavad Gita. One need not read any other Vedic literature because it is spoken by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Bhagavad Gita is the essence of all Vedic literature. So Srila Prabhupada is stressing the importance of the Bhagavad Gita over all other books. Srila Prabhupada was very anxious to publish the Bhagavad Gita. And we see of all the books which we distribute, it's the Bhagavad Gita which is the main seller. For the BBT, it's the, the main book. No other book sells as, as much as the Bhagavad Gita. It's very well known and uh, it's very much uh, popular with people all over the world. And I saw in different countries, like one country I go to, Taiwan. Taiwan's a you know, Chinese-speaking country. And when I first went there, like more than 30 years ago, very rare people knew Bhagavad Gita. But now there's so many editions of the Bhagavad Gita. So many different yoga teachers and different groups, they've all got Bhagavad Gita, they all know the Bhagavad Gita. And they have their own editions and their own interpretations of Bhagavad Gita. So this is a problem that there are many different people presenting Bhagavad Gita and they don't all present it. Huh? I think there's a lot of echo that I can't hear. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Rama. So we were saying that there are many different editions of the Bhagavad Gita, and of course, they're not 
authorized, they don't have their parampara, they're not presented through the disciplic succession. So you can see the difference that when the book is authorized, the result is that people become devotees. Other books may, other people write Bhagavad Gita and nobody becomes a devotee. People may read the Bhagavad Gita of other people, but it doesn't change them. It doesn't help them to take up spiritual life. But actually Bhagavad Gita is meant for bringing us into spiritual life. It's meant to help us to begin the path of self-realization. Srila Prabhupada instructed one sannyasi in London in Srila Prabhupada's time. Prabhupada told him, he said, I want you to go to go through this person's Bhagavad Gita and point out all the mistakes and write to him and point out every mistake which he has made in presenting the Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> so, so many different editions of Bhagavad Gita, but they just confuse people. Srila Prabhupada therefore called his Bhagavad Gita as it is. He presented it through the disciplic succession and he presented it with the commentaries of the Acharyas and the result is many people became devotees and took up Krishna consciousness. So this Gita Upanishad, which is an another name for the Bhagavad Gita, uh, the essence of all the Upanishads is just like is just like a cow and Lord Krishna who is famous as a cowherd boy is milking this cow. Arjuna is just like a calf and learned scholars and pure devotees uh, like to drink the nectarian milk of Bhagavad Gita. So you can see the, the nice example which is given here. It said that this Bhagavad Gita is just like a cow. Lord Krishna is a cowherd boy and he is milking the cow. And Arjuna is a calf. He is enjoying the milk. So this, this is a nice verse, famous verse. Sarva Panishad Sarva Panishad Sarva Panishad Doga Gopala Nandana Bhartavatsa Sudhir Bhakta Dittam Gitam Ritam Mahat So the Bhagavad Gita, the essence of the Vedas. In this way, Srila Prabhupada glorifies the Bhagavad Gita. Alright, so Srila Prabhupada writes in his introduction to the Bhagavad Gita, he says, Our only purpose is to present this Bhagavad Gita as it is in order to guide the conditioned student to the same purpose for which Krishna consciousness uh, to the to the same purpose for which Krishna consciousness to this planet since in a day of Brahma. So the purpose is to guide people to Krishna consciousness conditioned souls. Srila Prabhupada is presenting his commentary on this Bhagavad Gita for the purpose. Instead of satisfying his own personal material 
senses. He has to satisfy the senses of the Lord. This is the highest perfection of life. The Lord wants this and he demands it. One has to understand this central point of Bhagavad Gita. Our Krishna consciousness movement is, is teaching the whole world this center point. So Srila Prabhupada is describing his purpose in writing this Bhagavad Gita that he wants to bring everyone to Krishna consciousness. He wants everyone to understand the real mission of Lord Krishna. Srila Prabhupada also writes, he says, to help students understand and appreciate the, the mood and mission of Srila Prabhupada and to perpetuate that understanding within the ISKCON society. So, when we study the Bhagavad Gita, we encourage the students to appreciate the mood and mission which Srila Prabhupada had in presenting the Bhagavad Gita. And the you know, mood and mission is described here. That Srila Prabhupada's mood and mission was so he wants to make sure Krishna consciousness will remain there, that people will get eternal benefit from this knowledge. Prabhupada didn't want to just only give some temporary benefit for people. He wanted to change their lives, that once they come to Krishna consciousness, they will never give it up and go back again to the material life. So this was Srila Prabhupada's mood and mission. And Srila Prabhupada said, if even one person would become a devotee, then he would consider his mission successful. Srila Prabhupada did not mind he did not expect the whole world to become devotees, but he thought if even one person can become a devotee, that that would be very nice. So the first chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, actually all the 18 chapters of the Bhagavad Gita are called different kinds of yoga, just like the third chapter is Karma Yoga and the sixth chapter is Dhyana Yoga. The, 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 each and every one of the 18 chapters is a different kind of yoga. And the first chapter is called Vishada Yoga. Right? The name of this chapter Vishada. Knowledge that is manufactured by considering one's body as a self is called Vishada Yoga. Right? Knowledge that is manifested by considering one's body as a self, the self meaning the soul, that that is called Vishada Yoga. When a conditioned soul considers the body as the self, then he thinks Deha Dharma, Jati Dharma, Kula Dharma, Arya Dharma, etc. As Sanat, as we think of them as Sanatana, meaning eternal religious principles. And he becomes puzzled by lamentation, illusion, fearfulness. So we're explaining here what is this Vishada Yoga? That is the illusion to think I am the body, 
This is the big illusion. We're all very attached to the material body. So in the first chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna is described, well, not, Lord Krishna is not actually speaking in the first chapter. We will hear it's more Duryodhan. The first verse is Dhritarashtra inquiring from Sanjay and then they're talking about what's going on on the battlefield. So, they're explaining about Vishadha Yoga, the attachment to the body. So here you can see the first verse of the Bhagavad Gita, very famous verse. Then you can chant with me, Dharma Kshetra Guru Kshetra. Sama Veda Yayutsava Sama Veda Yayutsava Namaka Pandavas Jaiva Namaka Pandavas Sanjaya Kimma Kurvata Sanjaya Right? So Dharma Kshetra Kuru Kshetra Kuru Kshetra Kuru Kshetra is a place we can go there, it's not very far away from New Delhi. It's a much smaller place today than it was in the past. 5,000 years ago it was a very big place. But today it's not very big. But still, it's a, ho a holy place. People go there even today as they did 5,000 years ago. Lord Krishna came to Kurukshetra, not just once, not just for the Bhagavad Gita and the Kurukshetra war. Lord Krishna came there, he had come there before the battle of Kurukshetra. He had come there on pilgrimage. There was an eclipse and at that time Krishna came to Kurukshetra with all of his wives from Dwarka. They all came to Kurukshetra. And at that time, all of the gopis came from Vrindavan. So Kurukshetra was the only place outside of Vrindavan where Lord Krishna met with Srimati Radharani and the gopis. But Kurukshetra is Dharmakshetra, it's a place for religious activities. Lord Krishna had come there to perform sacrifice when there was the eclipse. But here in the Bhagavad Gita, they have come to go to battle. And the battle is meant to be fought according to religious principles. It's meant to be a, bat, a, a dharma yud, a battle fought according to the principles, according to the codes by which the Kshatriya fight. So they began like that, but in the course of the battle, things deteriorated and they did not follow I, after some time because uh, the situation became too much, too intense and they did not follow exactly. So there you can see the translation of the first verse. Dhritarashtra is speaking and he's addressing his secretary Sanjay. And he's saying, After my sons and the sons of Pandu assembled in the place of pilgrimage at Kurukshetra, Desiring to fight, what did they do? So Dhritarashtra was anxious that there should be a war. He did not want that his sons would avoid the battle. He wanted that there should be a battle. But Dhritarashtra shows how much he is in the bodily concept of life. As we said, this, this chapter is 
Vishuddha Yoga. Then in the bodily concept, Dhritarashtra has separated his sons and the sons of Pandu. He says, what did my sons and the sons of Pandu? Now Dhritarashtra is actually, he's meant to be taking care of the Pandavas. He's supposed to be the stepfather. He's supposed to be taking care. His brother was Pandu. And Pandu had died while the children, while his children, the Pandavas, were very young. And Dhritarashtra was supposed to take care of them. But he's in the bodily concept of life. He's only thinking about his children. He's not thinking about the sons of Pandu as his children. He should be thinking that the sons of Pandu are also my children. But he's not. He's only thinking about his own sons. So he has put this question showing his ignorance. How much is in the bodily consciousness? Right? So Dharma Chitra, a religious field. So Prabhupada explains, he said, just like in the rice field, they will grow paddy and there will be unnecessary, unnecessary weeds and plants. You have to pull them out. So in the, Prabhupada said, in the same way, in the religious field of Guru Chitra, unwanted plants like Dhritarashtra's son have to be removed, they have to be wiped out, pull out the weeds. So, <laughs> this, this of course is going to happen in the course of the Kurukshetra War. So in the first chapter, it's very interesting to see how the different sides are speaking. On the one side you have Duryodhan and he has to speak to his army and he's, he's the leader of his army and he wants to encourage them to fight. So Duryodhan is the oldest son of Dhritarashtra and he's speaking to his great generals. He has great generals like Bhishma and Drona. Right? Drona. Now, who should he speak to first? Should he speak first to Bhishma or should he speak to Drona? They are both Maharatis. They are both great souls. Now, who should he speak to first? Bhishma? Bhishma is senior by age. He is the grandfather. So he is senior by age. But Drona is a Brahmana. Bhishma is a Kshatriya. So the Brahmana's position is higher than the Kshatriya. So in this way, Duryodhana shows his diplomacy. He speaks first to Drona because Drona is a Brahmana. So he thinks I should give more importance to the Brahmana than to the Kshatriya. So he's, he addresses Drona and he says to him, O oh my teacher, Drona is Drona Acharya. Acharya means one who teaches by his example. So Drona was a teacher of Duryodhana and all of the brothers of Duryodhana, the Kurus, they were all the students of Drona. And the Pandavas were also the students of Drona. But somehow Drona was obliged to fight against the Pandavas. 
So Drona says to Bhishma, Duryodhan says to Drona, he said, Oh my teacher, behold the great army of the sons of Pandu, so expertly arranged by your intelligent disciple, the son of Drupada. So Duryodhan is pointing out about the, another uh, a disciple of Drona. Drona had many disciples, right? He was teaching military arts. He was actually a spiritual person. He was a great, a great soul. But he was obliged to take up teaching military arts. He knew how to fight with all different weapons. So he came and he taught the sons of Dhritarashtra and he also taught the Pandavas. But he also taught another person. He taught this person named, who knows the name? The, another who was the, the, the son of Dropada, the son of Dropada, Drista Dumna, yes, Drista Dumna. Drista Dumna was the son of Dropada. Of course, Drista Dumna also has a sister. What's the name of the sister? Dropadi. And they were both born from the fire. They were not ordinary souls. They were born from the Yagya. Drona did a, uh, rather Drokada did a Yagya to get somebody who would kill, who would kill Drona. Because Drokada was not able to defeat Drona. So he did a yagya. He wants a son who will kill Drona for him. So Drishta Dumna was born for this purpose. Now Drishta Dumna was also a student of Drona. So Duryodhana is saying, just look, the intelligent disciple, your disciple, he's arranged the army. And they're on the other side. So Drona's fighting on one side, and on the other side is this, on the other side is this, this student, the student Abhimanu, along with the Pandavas. So they're on different sides. So Duryodhan knew, he knew that this boy, Abhimanu, He is born to kill Drona. So he is warning Drona. Drista Dumna. Drista Dumna. Not Abhimanyu. Drista Dumna. Drista Dumna was born to kill Drona. So Duryodhana is warning Drupada. Look, that man, he is on the other side. He is going to kill you. You have to be very careful. If you know someone is born to kill you, then you will have to be very careful in dealing with them. It can be a problem. So, Drishta Jumna was that person. And he was a student of Drona. He had learned from Drona. The teacher taught the student, but the student He's going to kill the teacher in the future. So, just understand how kind how kind Drona was. He was a real Brahmana. He was a real Brahmana because he taught Drishta Jumna. Although Drishta Jumna is going to kill him, but still he thought, no, I am a Brahmana. I should teach him. 
That is the nature of a real Brahmana. That they will not consider they will not consider and what benefit they will get. They think only that I'm a Brahmana, it's my duty to give, to give knowledge, to give education, to teach others. Right? This this should be the mode of devotees. Devotees should have that mode that we want to give knowledge to others. You tell people about Lord Krishna. That's very important for us. We don't think, what will I get? What are you going to give me? We think only, what can I give to others? What do I have to give them? So, Drona was like that. Even though this man Drishta Jumna is going to kill him, he doesn't he didn't care. He took him, yes, you can be my student. I will take you as a student. So devotees, we also want to have that kind of mood in being Krishna conscious. The mood to give our knowledge whatever we know. To share it with others. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught that there was one Brahmana, he wanted to leave his home and go with Lord Chaitanya. But this Brahmana had a family. He had a wife and children, he had a home. And Lord Chaitanya had come to his home and the Brahmana had given him food and then Lord Chaitanya was going and then when Lord Chaitanya was leaving then the Brahmana fell at Lord Chaitanya's feet and said, Oh, please take me with you. I can no longer tolerate the material life. This material world is so miserable place. I want to go with you. But Lord Chaitanya rejected him. He chastised him. He said, no, don't speak like that. That is not proper. He said, you should stay here. But Lord Chaitanya told him, the words which Lord Chaitanya said are very famous. Yari teki tari kaho Krishna upadesh. Amara gaya urohana tara iridesh. In other words, the Lord Chaitanya told the Brahmana, wherever you go and whoever you meet, you tell them about Krishna upadesh. The teachings of Lord Krishna. And Lord Chaitanya says, Amar Agaya Guru Hana said, By my order, become a teacher and save the land. By my order, become a teacher and save the world. Telling them the message of Lord Krishna. So, this is a very important example. The mood which Drona had there in the Bhagavad Gita. And the mood which Lord Chaitanya gave to the Brahmana and Kurma, that he's telling them, give that knowledge, share that knowledge, whatever you know, distribute it. Don't keep it for yourself. You may say, well, I don't know very much. I'm a very new devotee. How can I tell anyone about Krishna? But you don't need to know very much. Whatever you do know, you need to use it. That is important. You need to use what you know. Just like you know you're not the body. 
you know you are the soul and you know Krishna is God, Krishna is the Supreme Lord. So you simply tell these things, you simply explain your position that Krishna is the Lord and we are all his servants. He is the master and we are all his servants. And in this way, by explaining these basic points, then your knowledge is perfect and your teaching is perfect. You don't have to know a lot, but whatever you do know, share it with others. That is very important for us. Right? So, this example of Drona is very good. Prabhupada uh, explains. Dronacharya knows that Drupad Maharaj has got his son in future. In future he would kill me. Still, when he was offered to become his disciple, to learn military art, he accepted. Yes, that means the Brahmana was so liberal. When he is coming as my disciple, never mind. He would kill me in the future. That doesn't matter. But I must give him teaching. So Srila Prabhupada explained this also, you see. The liberal nature of a Brahman. We are trying to cultivate also this Brahmanical nature. The state of a Brahmana is preliminary to becoming Vaishnava. We want to become Vaishnava, first we have to become Brahmana. Then we can go on and become Vaishnava. So Brahmana should be like that, very liberal very generous. Even you give whatever we have to others. You can see that liberal nature in the Srimad Bhagavatam. The example is there about King Indra. He wanted to kill one big Asura named Pritasura. So King Indra he approached the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Narayan. And he prayed to Lord Narayan. And he asked Lord Narayan, please kill this demon for us. But Lord Narayan said, no, no, I'm not going to kill him. You want to kill him? You kill him yourself. Lord Narayan said, I'm not going to do this for you. You have to do it yourself. But he said, I will tell you how you can do it because Indra was puzzled. He didn't know how he could ever defeat such a powerful person as Vrita Sura. So the Lord told him, You go to the Dichi. There is this great yogi called the Dichi and ask him to give the bones from his body and you can use the bones from his body to make a weapon and with that weapon you can kill Vrindasura. So Indra went to the Dichi. The Dichi was a renowned sage. He was living in Naimisharanya and Indra came to the Dichi and he asked him, my dear, dear great sage Tadichi, can you give me the bones from your body? So Tadichi said to him, don't you know the body is the thing we are most attached to? Right? 
you're very attached to the body, you spend a lot of time taking care of the body, spend time, anything wrong with the body, we take care of it, we go to doctors, we go to hospital, we go to so many places to take care of the body. So, Dadichi, he was a great yogi, he was very charitable, and he just wanted to hear philosophy from Indra. So he was telling him, you know, to give up the body is very difficult. You are very attached to the body. So Indra then said to Dadichi, he said, you know, I know sometimes it's difficult to give charity. But you should know also, it's difficult to ask for charity. Right? You give ch to give charity, sometimes we don't have any, anything to give. People may come and ask for charity. You don't have any money, you don't have any wealth to give them charity. You would like to give, but you don't have anything. So sometimes it's difficult to give charity. But Indra was it's also difficult to ask for charity. To ask people give charity. Not a very easy thing to do. So that day she said, yes, it's true. Very nice. So Tadichi gave up his body. He performed meditation and he went out of the body and Indra took the bones and he made the weapon and he was able to kill Brita So that this is a Brahmanical nature to give. We want to develop that mood, the generous mood to give, give knowledge, just like when we do Harina Sankirtan, we are giving the holy name, we give the holy name to others. So we have to understand the importance of developing the Brahminical culture. So you can see the very beginning of the Bhagavad Gita, the mood of Bhagavad Gita. Okay, so Woman Chang Dao. Bojumanga, Bojumanga Kaisha, Jan, Bolamanga Pinch, Inga Chanchan, the Bolaman, Ta, Iting Yao, Shiang, Bang Baju Chitadale, Tamia Tamia, Shang Ziji, the Hong Shi, Tashang Baku Chitadale, Yuni Sanchi, Ichi. Will it come to Chicago then? So it's like Bojo Van Gogh, come and jump down. Drona. Drona, you can come and do. You can come and do. That in English, Drishta Yuna. Kashyap Maharaj Dropada, the Persia. The Dropadi, the Chanti. So Drishta Yuna. Tatsusha. Now the future, so you can teach it, or you can tell me the highest, the highest you can do, you can do it. Drona. And the drona should have the data. So, the human kind of person, the drona. You should drona, you should show, 
Nega Haiwo. So, Tadu Manu, Tadu Jau Ta, Yom Antoa Uchi. And we draw the Shitado Aushu, Tadu Shau Ti and the Manu Ta, 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 Tadu Shau Ti Shao Ta, so Ta the Mantu. Roman Ye Chang Dao, Da Din Chi. Da Din Chi, Ye Shu, Nika Bola Man. Da Din Ta the Gu Gu, Willa Ke Indra. Indra Shiman, Yorkuna Gu Chi, Kali Sa Ta Ma. So the first chapter is like that. It's explaining these different issues, the political situation. On one side, you have Duryodhana speaking to encourage his soldiers. But on the other side, you can see that the Pandavas have many things in their neighbor. And that some of these different things are mentioned, things in their favor. The celestial weapons. Arjuna had been given many different weapons. And Bhima had made terrible vows that how he was going to kill all the sons of Dhritarashtra. And he vowed that he would rip out the heart of Dushasan and he would take the blood and Wash the hair of Draupadi like that, and then uh, we're told that they're all Maharatas, they're great fighters, they can fight with 10,000 people at a time. So Doryodhan is speaking, encouraging different people, and he mentions the different names, different people. He has to be respectful to different people. You can see he mentions first Drona, and then Bhishma, and then Karna, like that, according to their position in society. So in the beginning of the Bhagavad Gita, many different names are mentioned, names of the great warriors. So Prabhupada explained, he said, some people may ask that by mentioning these great fighters, what spiritual progress we make. So because we are meant for chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. We are meant for chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So by chanting the names of these great fighters, what do we gain? The answer, this question may be raised there, so the answer is given. But the thing is that Nirvanda Krishna Sambandhi Wherever there is connection with Krishna, that also becomes Krishna. So these warriors name, uh, men, mentioning, we should not neglect Krishna. One, we should not neglect. Krishna wanted to gather all the demonic power in that battlefield of Kurukshetra and killed them. That was his plan. So Krishna had arranged the battle of Kurukshetra. Although they tried to avoid it, Krishna had to arrange that it took place. And his purpose, of course, was to relieve the earth of the burden of so many demoniac read the Srimad Bhagavatam, 
it describes how Mother Bhumi had gone to Lord Brahma with tears in her eyes complaining about the situation. And she said the planet is overburdened with so many demoniac kings. So she came to Lord Brahma for help. So Lord Brahma then meditated to Lord Vishnu. He meditated to Lord Vishnu in Swinka Tweet. And Lord Vishnu replied to Lord Brahma that I am going to come there and I will take birth in the Yadu dynasty and all of you also you should take birth there. And in this way the different warriors, the Yadu dynasty, they all appeared and so many different demigods and people from the spiritual world, they all came to be with Lord Krishna to take part in his pastimes and to see the wonder. So Lord Krishna's purpose in coming there was to relieve the earth of the burden of so many demoniac kings. And he arranged, he brought them all together at one point, the battle of Kurukshetra, and they could all kill each other. So in this way everything was finished in 18 days. The battle of Kurukshetra was 18 days. And Lord Krishna arranged it with him. Get rid of all the demon kings. 18 days is all finished. All removed. So this is Lord Krishna with his plan, his mission. He fulfilled the prayers of Bhumi. Mother Bhumi, the deity of earth, was praying. So Lord Krishna came and he arranged to remove the burden of all the demoniac so in this way, the mission was accomplished. All right. So, you are the one who is the man, the man, the man, the man, the man, the man, the the man, the man, the man, the man, the man, the man, how many things that Yeshikan Krishna you want to see? So, so the teaching that Krishna you want to see, you should have that, you should think so. And Krishna and Pai, Rojo, the Jan Chan, Rojo Krishna and Pai. Anyway, we can see Chiro, the Urban Thai Goa, Bumi, Chiga, uh, since you the the Shansham, Chi Dao, Chi Brahma, Bhagavan Ta, and we come at the Oma Thai Doa, come so I do three hundred sitchin, do it to the Sinchi of Puha. So it touched down to Chi Brahma, Bhagavan Ta, and Chi Brahma, Ta, Chi Dao, Chi Vishnu, Bhagavan Taman. So if Vishnu goes to Taman, what even though Dao Yadu, the one child, find that intrusion. Why work? Why you lie? Me and Kate come on each and you walk inside that bed and find that 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 bed decision. Me and Kate come on each and you chan chan for the shell yao si guang zai jigen xin chiao. So you can do a bunch and then lie down. I know you see it, then something links in Shijia, shall I then? You can Krishna Ichi, Chanja, Krishna the Shyam. So the Krishna and Pai, Chanja, and go a Mosala, Zai Shibatian, Chi Wenti Doji, Chi Shyam, Shibatian, Krishna and Pai. Alright. Are there any questions? Yeah. It's a fact that uh, we did power Gita, so Maharaj went to the mood and was not power for it. So sometimes we also encourage to read uh, power Gita written by Vishma Dhapur and also like Ramachari also written power Gita.
Is it when we read that books that God is our God, no will change and all this or all the same time? Yes. And that the books written by Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, Baladeva Vidya Bhutan, they are also one of my books, provided the translation is done by a devotee. Because they, they wrote their commentaries in Sanskrit. So somebody, young Java qualified translator, something qualified to present the books. So if you have an authorized version by a devotee, then you can read also their books. Generally, Prabhupada followed Baladeva Vijayapurzan and he would put a lot of the commentary of Baladeva Vijayapurzan in our Bhagavad Gita. Not everything, but a lot of it is coming from Baladeva Vijayapurzan and sometimes also from Vishwanath Chakravarti But there may be other things which you can find which Prabhupada did Generally, Prabhupada told us he said, everything is in my books. You just simply study my books, you get everything. But if, you, if you've already gone through Prabhupada's books, and you're familiar with them, and you study them carefully, then if you want, then you can go on and study the books by the other acharyas. So, Prabhu Chandala, Rama the function church, Rama Kari Kanchitana and the shoot, to the Prabhupada should be why Rama Kari Kanchitana Acharya and the shoot. So, look up, he eating Shabri Prabhupada the shoot, he Kari Kanchitana Acharya and the shoot. Because he didn't eat the same kind, Prabhupada the shoot. I mean, Prabhupada should. So I want to show you the don't say, don't say I want to show you the answer. She said, look at the eating, while I had your shit here, and she had she probably had the show. You had the hand, 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 Are you going to any other questions? Yes. Okay.就是你，我家放的第一张，因为有很多人的名字很长，很复杂。我们把书开有飞风险者的时候，他们会觉得他这个。我们把书开有飞风险者的时候，他们会翻到第一章的时候就没有耐心，就觉得这跟我有关系嘛，就好像跟我没有关系，因为我看到很累，没有感觉。有
So I told them, yeah, that's probably a good idea. Because these names are uh, difficult, you know, they're not Chinese names. They're, we try to transcribe the, the, the Sanskrit names into Chinese writing, then it's very difficult for people to read. So the first chapter, of course, there's quite a lot of names of great warriors. So, what is the initial story? The teacher, <音>很多名字很多人的名字都是他们的名字也没有是的意思是所以你可以跟努力他们中间讲开始好不如呢还有一个细节就是当我看书的时候我有一个思维就是如果我认为对方对灵魂的科技感兴趣我会建议他直接
is trying to do something, and we should appreciate that fact that they are sacrificing their time, their energy to try to distribute Krishna consciousness. So we should appreciate that, not just find fault. Prabhupada Wakan Guru function, Jao Wai Ben Chuan Jao, the Shi Yuan and Bao Yuan, Taman Jed, the Wakan the function, the Buhao, Wakan Yen Chang the Buhao, Wakan Yen Ming Taman, how the Yin Shang, Wakan Chang Chou, Wakan the Jeshu Buhao, Taman Puchu Pushan Si, Wakan the Jeshu. So you will go to Tapa, but no man, 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 function,就他们,呃,为了别的人的好处,他们有一句传教,虽然他们不满意,就他们接受,他们有一句,到外面见,不认识的人,就他们接受,Krishna,Consciousness,Krishna接受。所以我们, you Bhumani, the Bauyan, or Hare Krishna functions of Bhuhao. Vaman may bantha manchu sayo. Vaman jisham for Guru Krishna. That's the three children. Yes, another question in front of you. General question, Maharaj. Uh, we see that devotees, when they start a uh, movement, they are very enthusiastic. Very enthusiastic, doing chanting, service, hearing, everything. But over time, the enthusiasm gets uh, lesser. So, how can we stay enthusiastic all the time? Yes. How to stay enthusiastic all the time. Yes, you're right, Manaji, this is a problem. Sometimes in the beginning, the devotees are very enthusiastic, but the enthusiasm can go down. So, it's important to have enthusiastic associations. To keep the devotees enthused, you have to, you have to have enthusiastic people. You need to get association with people who are enthusiastic. Who are eager to serve Krishna, who are very energetic and devotees. So enthusiasm comes by just being enthusiastic. Why do people stop being enthusiastic? In the beginning they're enthusiastic. And why does it go down? Well, one devotee, he explained, he said, in the beginning, when we first come to Krishna Consciousness, we think all the devotees are pure devotees. You know, we have a very high opinion of devotees in the beginning. But somehow, after some time, when we get to know people more, then sometimes our opinion goes down, and we start to see faults, and we start to criticize devotees. In the beginning, we're seeing all the devotees as being very great souls and we are respecting them and, and so we're very enthusiastic. But gradually we start to see things we don't like and we start to find fault with them and when we start to find fault then our enthusiasm goes down. So that's one possible reason why people lose their enthusiasm. So we have to try to avoid that tendency. We have to 
keep a positive mood and always look on the good side of others and be critical of ourselves and don't be critical of other people. So that will help to keep us always enthusiastic. You understand? Mataji Shua Jinja Waka function to Kaisha and Virginia to function for all. And then what we should set the function to it. Woman had woman take wa woman had virgin to go for all. We should run well, woman the man under down for the big down. From the earth, which is the law, from the camera, and draw, and draw, and draw out the city of a big, big function. So, you walk out to the car and teach them, while I set the function to the shell, while I can't achieve function. Go away, while I can't see, while I can't do a whole lot of picture, while I can't do cheat time. So, while I can't see, while I can't do a whole lot of picture. So, then, Bob and me and my daughter, we're in the pool. Bob and me and I can't teach you the champion. Can't be other than the youth. Bob and me and I can't, and we're in the function of the end. See, I'm Bob and me. Okay, we see and urgent that I do. That we want to always be enthusiastic. It's a very important quality in the nectar of instruction. Rupa Goswami describes six things which are very good for our devotional service to progress. And the first thing is enthusiasm. Utsahan. Enthusiasm, very important, very important. You want to have that quality. You want to keep your enthusiasm. So, try to make a habit to be critical of our own self and don't be critical of other devotees. And that will help us to keep up our enthusiasm. We want to see the good in others and see the faults in ourselves. I would like to ask you 就是知道他的学生将来会，就是我，我想问一下，刚才讲到婆罗门的一一些优秀品质，啊，乐于助人，诚实，啊，像多拉加亚知道自己的学生将来要会杀死自己，他还是依然教他各种知识、武术，嗯。我们中国的有个谚语叫“农夫何”，那那那有个故事叫“农夫何蛇”的故事。这个农夫呢，看到那个蛇冻僵了，很痛苦，他好心把那个蛇让它放到怀里，让它暖和，暖过来。结果蛇缓过来之后，反而把这个农夫给咬死了。所以说。讲多了，恰恰他们是超然的啊！他知道这个孩子会杀死自己，但是依然教他一些知识。但是我们的呃教育当中，从小就告诉学生们啊，这个农夫和蛇的那个谚的那个故事，就是说一些坏人呢、啊，没必要同情他们，就是呃，你对他好，等他强壮了，有有力的时候，才会反咬你。咬你一口，或者是，呃，他不会感恩了、啊，那像白眼狼一样的
会害你。所以说，如果都那么诚实，都那么超然，这样的话，会不会起到还不好的作用？就是说，如果一个婆罗门啊，愿用自己这些好的品质，结果最后起起的作用还反而不好，结果还不好。这让我说清楚没有？就说这这两种是反的，中道禅养那也是超然的品质，但是这个我们现实生活当中，如果奉献者们都用这个诚实的这种品质啊去对待任何的一些事情事情的话，有时候就会发生这种。农夫和蛇的这个故事，我不知道故事听到过没有？就是那个那个蛇、啊，你把它啊救活了，它会反咬你一口，把你咬死你。他们说，有个 Chinese story about some man who took care of a snake, and the, you know he's taking this. Taking care of the snake, the snake had some problem. He took care of the snake, but when the snake got better, then the snake bit him, and the man died. So he's saying that sometimes, you know, brahminical qualities can be like that. That you can do harm to you, you can try to help people, and they can come back to you and just give you trouble, do harm to you. But A devotee will always accept whatever situation comes upon him. He will accept it as a karma. He will accept it as reactions due to his past deeds, and he will go on with his devotional service. So the devotee, Brahmana, one of the qualities is tolerant. And how tolerant you have to be? Tolerant like a tree. So even though somebody may do harm to you, you have to tolerate it. You just accept that this is some reaction due to my past deed. But it's my duty to act as a brahmana to try to help, to do good, even though the person cannot appreciate, but still. We should do our duty as a brahman. And if you think I'm a jail woman, I'm going to be in the shoe. I don't want to run. So do not touch and shame and shame. We are not going to come to ball and the picture. Ah, you're in the goose. You're in the. 一个 scorpion 这么说啊 ，scorpion 你知道？该用啥的话？蝎子。啊？蝎子。蝎子。蝎子。嗯。蝎子。一个蝎子在在社会里面，那一个人看这个蝎子，快死了，所以他用他的手把蝎子出来，就是把那个蝎子出来的时候，蝎、就、子、是、要他，他不要的时候，这个蝎子。掉下来，栽进去那个水里。所以那个人说，他再去来把那个鞋子出来，那个鞋子再咬他，啊，再掉进去那个水里。那个人把那个鞋子再下来，他的朋友说：“为什么你做这样？那个鞋子一直要你啊！”所以那个人说：“那个鞋子不放弃他的本心，为什么我需要放弃我的本心？”Right. I'm, I'm telling them the story about a, a man saved the scorpion. The scorpion fell in the water, and the, the man picked it up out the water. But when he picked it up out the water, the scorpion bit him, so it fell back in the water. So he picked it up again from the water, but again the scorpion bit him, and so it fell back in the water. He went to pick it up again. His friend said, "No, why you do that? It's always going to bite you." But his friend said, "No, the scorpion did not give up his nature. Why should I give up my nature?" 
My nature is to see this, right? So, this is the idea. That even though somebody may do bad to you, but it's okay. You should tolerate. We have to accept whatever come reactions to our past sins. We will go on with our emotional learning. That day you come from Sutra Mikshamana, Ujjana, Ivadma, become Guru. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, Lord Brahma's prayer, one who accepts all adverse conditions and goes on with the devotional service, then he's qualified to become my honor Lord the Buddha. So the Bhakti Lord, if you read about the 11th uh, canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, the Brahmana from Avanti Desh. Did you ever read that? Canto 11. The Brahmana from Avanti Desh. He got insulted in so many ways. You know, he became, well, he used to be a businessman and he was rich, but then he lost all of his money. So he took up, he became a monk and he went to bed. And he went to bed from people and they knew him. Oh, we remember you. We remember you're a miserly person. You're a nasty man. You never give any charity. And they would spit on him. And they would do horrible things to him. But he would tolerate. He, he fixed himself on the super soul. The he, he, he would just remember the Lord in the heart. And in this way he went on, tolerating everything. So that should be the word of a devotee. That they will tolerate all the difficulties, whatever company, and they won't have any bitterness to others. Even though you're trying your best to help them, and they just do all nasty things to you, just accept it. The grace of Krishna. This must be reactions due to our past sins. That we go on and tolerate. Okay. I'll get Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Shukamati. Shukamati.